nice to be with you tonight. Um, I'm going to be talking about music synthesis and JavaScript, or how I learned to stop worrying and make music in the DOM. It's a little Dr. Strangelove quote for you. Um, before I get started, I want to get something out of the way, which is synth cats. <laughs> got, got to get your uh, synth cat pictures in here. Um, just a little bit about why am I talking about this. Um, so I'll be talking about a brief history of um, uh, music synthesis, the basics of music synthesis, and then I'll be, for the first time on live television, showing you Jolie Tone, which is my own web browser synthesizer I made in two days while I was supposed to be doing Stack Store. <laughs> so, um, a little bit about myself. So as you guys remember, probably from my hot seat, um, I went to Berkeley School of Music in Boston and studied uh, music synthesis and music production and engineering. Um, my principal instrument is piano, and I love all the synths. I have the tattoo to prove it. Um, I love all the analog, digital, and browser. Still digital, yes, it is a digital synth, even if it's in the browser. So um, a brief history of music synthesis. So um, you can trace electronic instruments all the way back to the 1800s. Um, so this guy, Elisha Gray, was from Ohio, and he created a musical telegraph. So if you guys ever wanted to listen to Morse code for fun, um, you could definitely do that. Um, he connected am an amplifier and everything to, and all that. Um, uh, other early synthesizers were tone wheel organs, which uh, kind of exploded. Um, a lot of people think of church organs as like the very first synthesizers. They're not electronic, but they were definitely uh, same ballpark. So 1897, Tone wheel organs, and then pre-modern electronic instruments. Some famous ones would be Theremin by Leon Theremin. Uh, Clara Rockmore is a very famous uh, violinist and also thereminist, I guess. Um, also, on an own Martineau, um, which is a very cool instrument, similar concept, but it's a keyboard. Um, and uh, Radiohead uses it on a bunch of their tracks. So, so once you get through the 20s and the 40s and all that, we have Harold Bode, the father of the modern modular synth uh, synthesis. He wrote a really interesting paper on uh, what it would look like to do a more modern uh, modular synthesizer. Um, he presented that, I, th I think it was here in New York um, at the AES uh, Audio Engineering Society. Um, and so two guys were there at that talk, Donald Buchla and Robert Moog. And they both uh, created giant companies and Whoever synth head you ask, they'll tell you which one's better, a Buchla or a Moog. Um, so this is actually really cool because um, after these guys started making synthesizers, uh, they started being used a lot in uh, popular music. Uh, the Beatles used a lot of synthesizer stuff on some of their later stuff. And obviously, after that, we just had all kinds of companies going crazy. Uh, I like the Moog, actually, it, the filters on the Moog. Um, so if you're, in case you're wondering what my favorite synth is, Thank you, I didn't even plan this. Um, it's not on this list, it's actually this guy, which is uh, the ARP 2600. Uh, this came out in 1971. Uh, fun fact about the ARP is that it was used to make the sounds of R2-D2 in, uh, in Star Wars. Um, I actually got to play around with this quite a bit at Berkeley, and if you want to hear a song I made with it, let me know and I'll send it to you. I'll slack it to you. Um, so, now we got the history out of the way. Uh, just to talk about why I talked about the history, I just want you guys to uh, fully appreciate how easy JavaScript makes our life in the end. So, um, so now that we have a little history, I'm just going to talk briefly about uh, modular synthesis and what it, um, what's it all about. And actually, I think this is really interesting because it's kind of like thinking about this, like the, the full stack we're learning. So it's basically a bunch of building blocks uh, to get something to happen. So the very first thing is uh, synth is like I said, independent modules that can be connected together. Common components include a VCO or a voltage controlled oscillator. Um, traditionally, this would be uh, something that uh, the pitch would be changed based on how much voltage was being put into it. Um, so this would be your tones like sine waves, sawtooth waves, triangle waves, and all that sort of thing. Um, then we would have an envelope generator. Um, envelope generator, I kind of put a little thing here. This is a kind of shapes the sound, and so it, it tells you over time how you want the volume basically to, to happen. So you have an attack, um, which shows here's a little ramp, and then you have a time where the sound decays to a sustained note, and then when you release the note, 
there's some kind of tail that kind of goes off the end. And this was all done with voltages um, through cables. Um, then you have filters, um, which basically affect, affect the frequencies um, being passed through to the final output. You have effects. For example, the ARP 2600 that I showed in the last slide had a built-in spring coil reverb. That was actually pretty awesome to use. Um, and then lastly, at the output, you usually have a voltage-controlled amplifier or basically a, a big volume knob. Um, and like I said, this was all patched together. And tell me if this looks like any of your code. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, so this is a Buchla synth, actually. Um, so I don't know who exactly this is, but there's a huge uh, community of people that go crazy with this stuff still. Um, awesome. So I know you're thinking, where's the digital, right? OK. Here, here you go. This is my synthesizer I made for you guys, OK? Yay. OK. <laughs> cool. So. Um, so I made this little synthesizer um, using a cool JavaScript library called ToneJS. Um, it's a really ridiculous API built on web audio. Uh, it's extremely deep. I used just a tiny bit of it, but just in, in a nutshell. Uh, Tone provides a high performance, low latency building blocks and DSP, so you can build synthesizers, effects, and all kinds of things. Um, you can build trans, uh, songs and uh, sync it together with other devices. It's really insane. Um, like I said, yeah, it's very deep. I only had a few days with it. Um, and then for UI elements, I found a, a cool library called Nexus UI. And basically, it's a collection of HTML5 uh, interface components built on Canvas. Um, so it's really easy to, to drop things in to the page and then hook it up to something like TenJS uh, for widgets. So just a quick under the hood uh, to go back to the history that I was showing you guys earlier. This is how you would make a, a mono synthesizer, um, just one line of code, and that makes this, <laughs> which is pretty insane. Um, so making sounds, how do you make sounds? So uh, this is just an example of the Nexus UI. Um, it's basically a canvas. You give it a width and then the type, and then this creates this little widget here. Um, and then you just set up an event listener here. And then you say, whenever I press a key, I want it to make some noise. So, fiend. <laughs> and I, I can show you guys a little demo, too, if you guys want to see it. So I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it. And it's not going to fit on the page. Thankfully, it's reactive. OK. Uh, OK. So, um, so I just hooked up a few simple uh, Waveforms here, a little envelope, and some effects, and all that. So you can click on here. I don't know if you can hear it. So if you want to add some reverb on it, you could do that. Maybe some delay. Oh, that's nice. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you can change the sine wave, add some distortion. Ooh, OK. so. So yeah, so that's that. It's on my website, so if anyone wants to go and play around with it. Um, I, I can't yet, because I haven't hooked up being able to play with a real keyboard. So you just have to click things on it. So technically, I could play a song, but I'm not going to, because it's too much work. <laughs> so so um, uh, thank you. That's my presentation. Yes, thank you. Thank you.